So the stuff with Letterman, with the hindsight, what do you think looking back at it? Well, I don't know. Was it a waste of time? Was it petty? Was it small? Do you wish you handled it differently? You know, I I, I could say, but I probably do the same thing. I'm not sure what I did wrong. It started that, oh, I, I took The Tonight Show away from Letterman. He says he never had it. He never had it. Yeah. But but the reason he didn't have it was because he was so good. Here's the thing. Johnny was on at 1130. David was doing better at 1230. I mean, he was killing, yeah. he was making huge money, all this kind of stuff. When, when, when I guest hosted, I got the same ratings as Johnny. Okay, so NBC said, whoa, we got a hit at 1130 with this new guy, and Letterman's killing it at 1230. If we get rid of Jay, he'll go to ABC or CBS. We move Dave down. There's no guarantee he'll be a success. Let's keep Letterman where he was. And although although Johnny did want Letterman, uh, that was Johnny's choice. Johnny, that, it, the time slot belonged to NBC. Yeah. yeah. And, and Dave had kind of pissed people off a little bit too. But, all right, so I'll play this and just go ahead. stop it whenever you want. Uh, in my group, uh, the funniest was Jay. There, there were other people that would come in and uh, put on a better show, but just funny to funny, it was always Jay. What do you think of that, looking back on it, the rivalry and the late night wars and all that stuff? How do you categorize it in your mind? Well, it's um, overall, it's embarrassing because I don't want to be the guy who's uh, pissed off because, oh, I didn't get so-and-so, uh, because I didn't truly feel that way. You oh, didn't feel that way? No. No. Thought? You know, I love Letterman. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not, and you probably know this as a comic, you go through life and when, when you're starting out and you meet people who just don't get you. I mean, they might get it a little bit, but you know, it's when, it's like when you're dating and the girl goes, why do you have to do a set every night? What, why have to go to the club every night? Okay, get a new girlfriend, okay? Okay, because this is first. I'm sorry, girlfriend, you're second. You might tie it, but you're never going to be in front of it, you know. And then you, you come to a place like comedy store. You meet Letterman. You meet Richard Lewis. You meet other people that really think like you, and you form a bond. I could never dislike. I mean, was I hurt by a lot of things? Sure, sure. That's okay. But there's Hurt nobody. in that, in that like, it was personal or hurt in, like, fuck, this is, I, can't we... We both have these amazing perches. Like we're uh, we're both the top of the heap in show business. Can you know, we I just enjoy it, was, it? The thing I liked about it was I got the ratings, Dave got the critics. And that seemed fair. And and you know something? If you flipped it, that would be okay too. Mm -hmm. I would take either. I mean, I think we both did okay that way. But truly one of the funniest people. And I felt he and I were the perfect foil feature because any time spent with Letterman I always left with more material than I came in with mm. in the sense that oh well, what's, what's the thing they said oh yeah you know let's expand that yeah you know we would have a conversation and we'd both be laughing and there was no greater joy than putting something in that Letterman genuinely laughed at because Letterman didn't always find things funny I mean one of, the, one of my favorite moments there was a comedian named Fred Travelina. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Fred? He, he, vaguely. He was an impressionist. Yeah. But of the old school, you know, tuxedo, Vegas. Oh, here's Bob Hope at a party, you know. Like, yeah. Good kind. And he just hounded Letterman. Don't put me on. Put me on. And he, because we know, we all, you know, all these things from the comedy store, you know, you feel guilty. You don't have. So Letterman puts him on. Yeah. And he sits down. Dave, how are you going? So and so. And Dave asks him a question. He goes, Dave, you know, with my crazy mind. And Dave, <laughs> you know my crazy mind. You see Lemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's just so uncomfortable yeah. in this line of quite. Oh, yeah. Anyway, with my wacky mind, you know how I think. And I, I'm just screaming laughing. Dragging him into his horrible setups. Yeah, yeah. Just It just made me laugh. And that was, the, we didn't have that when Dave and I got together. I would say something and he would say something scathy or snarky and I would try to come back with them. Oh, so it was, it was the greatest time in my career. It was the most fun on TV. I believe you. And what I'm curious about is as it got, you got bigger, he got bigger, rivalry, all that competition. Is there a party that feels like, uh, eh, shit, I wish it was still, we were closer, like the relationship maintain i don't know i i think if we ever 
did get together, it would immediately go back to right what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, like in '78. I mean, I like, I love comics. Yeah. You know, I'm not a religious person, but you know, if Dave stabbed me, I go, he still make me laugh, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, so it's it's tricky. It's tricky. We have really nothing in common, uh, but cars, cars, yeah, yeah. And five hundred million dollars each. I think Dave's probably got a few bucks more than I do. Okay, five, five, five. Dave's got no, five whatever. eighty. <laughs> whatever. But what I mean, you seem you seem obsessed by wealth. I to, I do seem obsessed yeah, by wealth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Has it eluded you? You do pretty no, good. Yeah, you do. It's right. fun though. Yeah. It's fun to talk about because the thing everyone pursues, no one can talk about. Right, and then when right. it's in the paper, how much you make, it's like, well, let's talk about. it. Right, right. And it's one of those things. That's why I don't complain about anything. Like right. When, when I had my accidents, I just do jokes about it because. People love to see rich people being set on fire. Okay, it's, it's really you know, it's something yeah. they enjoy. So you joke about it, you make you make fun of it, you know. But was I hurt by the things that went on back and forth? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some were like, really, okay. You know, I I, I remember once his producer called me. This is when Dave had his heart attack, mm -hmm. and they said, "Please don't say anything on the Tonight Show." I said, "Why? Well, I, I just please, they just don't, just don't mention it." Don't say anything. Okay, okay. So I, I didn't, you know. And about ten days later, the only one who never mentioned it was Leno. You never. I ah, I walked into that. I got set up on that. Yeah. I just said, ah, ah yeah. Stupid was I not to do that. Yeah. But that wasn't Dave. That was somebody on the show. But no, to this day, Letterman makes me laugh as much as anybody. Yeah. You know, fascinating character, funny and. There's a connection that we have that I can't describe. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, ah. That's all right. But you know something? It's like sex. I don't care how it works. It works. Just leave it. You know, I, I like to make love. I don't want to be a gynecologist. Okay. It's a little, it's a little too complicated. <laughs> I don't know what this means, but I like it. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. So, I mean, I always, I always like that. I mean, even when I went back to do the Oprah commercial with Letterman, that that thing. You Were know. you guys on set the same day, or they yes, shot separately? Same, no, same time. I flew in. Dave said, "Jay, hey, Dave, how are you?" We did our lines, and then Dave left, and we were there like a minute and a half, two minutes. But that was okay. That was okay. So it's like a you consider him like a work friend of someone you're a fan of, actual friend back then. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's like if you've ever been in a plane crash with someone, you have a bond. If you've ever been in a car accident, the two of you pull each other out. I don't know. My success was hinged to his. Uh, I don't know if his was hinged to mine, but mine was hinged to his. And I'm always grateful for the, the time I spent with. Those are the most fun part of my career because I could go on the Letterman show with something I thought of that afternoon and just do it. It was spontaneous. It wasn't rehearsed. Uh, we didn't have to run it past anybody. It just seemed to work because I knew, I just knew, I could see how the, the wheels turning. And I, I said, what Lennon was going to say about this? And I can always tell what I, what, like with the Super Success magazine, when I caught him off guard, oh, there was nothing more fun to me, nothing I enjoyed more ever yeah. than, than making Dave laugh. Yeah. It's, I wonder how it could have worked professionally if you're the host of Tonight Show, he's on after, or I guess on against, like, could you have maintained the relationship in any in like? Well, again, and, and be again, successful. Dave would be the guy, and I would be the. If it was a comedy team, Dave would be the straight man, and I would be the clown guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would. It, you'd be the Dean it's, Martin, it's, or no? You'd be the Jerry Lewis. It's better if David was the host and I was the comic, mm -hmm. because you know I remember Dave used to say to me when I first saw Letterman in the comedy. So I walked and I said. I introduced myself and I said, man, great wordsmith. I like the way you think this together. But just talk about how he phraseology yeah. and whatnot. And he said to me, how, how can you just be so confident? You got there and just, how can you just start yelling at people, you know? And because I, I, I wasn't as funny as I was loud. I was, hey, hey, no, hey nice to see you, pal. You know, just kind of, I didn't have a lot of jokes. But Letterman, he, he liked that part of it. He, he, he wasn't outgoing in that way. And I liked his words. So I think we took, a little bit from each other. I watched the way David phrased things. I said, yeah, I got to slow down and be more exact in how I, 
how I say things, you know? Yeah. And it's just one of them things. It's just one of those life things. Is that you know, it's one of those life things. Yeah. I mean, if Letterman ever wanted me for anything, I would be there. I am eternally grateful. And I'm sorry it got so ugly. I don't think it ever got really personal, personal. It was mostly other people. You know, once Stern gets into it and anybody else, mm -hmm. they're all attacking you. And they say, but they was okay. They was okay. I mean, I, I, I got it. You know, the idea that I somehow took the show away from him, well, that never happened. David's own success kept him from getting the show because they wanted to keep 1230 a hit. You know, but when, when I talk to strangers, they think Dave was all set to step in and I can, I guest hosted for five years. I heard you, you stood in the door and said, but wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but I guest hosted for five years before I even got the show. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, ah, the sands of time or sands like. Of, <laughs> sands of time. <laughs> Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.